Hello and welcome to the Pre Cairo podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Ben Glass, and today we're making a connection out at New Zealand Chiropractic College with Dr. Kelly Holt, the president of New Zealand Chiropractic College. Such an honor. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing any insights you can with any prospective students that are tuning in. If you could just get us started by sharing a little bit about what your background was before you decided to follow the chiropractic path and, and what it was that attracted you to this profession. Yes, yeah, sure, Ben. Uh, good to be here today. Uh, I was thinking about this the other day, so I'm, I'm putting a talk together for um, Concordia in Adelaide, which is, is next week. And I was going back to my roots and what really got me into chiropractic to begin with. And I first started going to see a chiropractor when I was nine. I had headaches uh, all the time, three or four times a week. And the solution that I had from the GP was, you know, here's your antibiotics because we give those to everyone for everything. And here's a lifetime supply of disparate, aspirin. And that didn't really make a lot of sense even, even as a nine-year-old. And my mum was going to see a chiropractor at the time. She took me along and uh, he said, well, let's get you adjusted. Didn't really know why he'd want to get me adjusted, what impact it could have. And pretty much overnight, my headaches went away. And I thought, this isn't a bad thing. Carried on going to see the chiropractor uh, regularly for years. And then I finished high school and I didn't really know what to do. Um, so I thought, I'll take a gap year. Uh, I, didn't, I knew I was going to go to university, but didn't know what I wanted to do. and didn't want to start a program that I wasn't really into. So I thought, I'll take a gap year and I'm going to go and work at the local supermarket starting at six in the morning, often working till nine at night, stacking shelves for pretty much no money, but that would be a great incentive to make sure you know I wasn't going to do that for the rest of my life. And during that gap year, uh, I was in seeing the chiropractor one day and he said to me, oh, what are you going to do? I said, I really don't know. I'm, I'm taking this year off. I still haven't worked out what I want to do. And he said, well, why don't you become a chiropractor? I, I think you'll make a great chiropractor. We're setting up a college here in New Zealand. It's starting next year and applications close tomorrow. So I went home, and back in those days, this was 1993, so 30 years ago, uh, I pulled out the encyclopedia to actually look up what this chiropractic thing was. Because to me, it was I turned up, uh, got checked, got adjusted, and I didn't have headaches. And reading about it in the, the encyclopedia, it was, wow, this actually makes a lot of sense. It's not just about me and my headaches. And... I looked at the, the chiropractor I was seeing, every time I went in there, he was happy and full of energy and you know, seemed really fulfilled with his job. So I put in an application that day and joined the inaugural class at the New Zealand College of Chiropractic back in 1994. And can you also just introduce yourself for me of uh, just reflecting on your career and also just you know your current status uh, just for the audience to, to get to know who, who you are today, but also um, kind of just uh, a reflection point or, or a brief overview, maybe a minute or less of just kind of intro to you. Yep, sure. Well, I graduated from college, got into private practice, started giving back to the college. So um, contributing, doing some teaching, uh, mentoring in the chiropractic center, got dragged in more and more each year and became involved with research. And Heidi Horvath came on board and we uh, became, a, a well, basically a research team. And for the next 15 years, I was heavily involved in research. I did my PhD in epidemiology, biostatistics, and um, helped Heidi to develop the research program. And then back in 2021, um, I was appointed president of the college. Awesome, awesome. Can you kind of just reflect back on uh, some some highlights to your student experience? I know it was a while ago and there's been many developments, but uh, can you maybe speak to maybe some challenges that you had to overcome, some surprises you encountered, uh, maybe some frustrations that you had that you had to shift inside of yourself uh, in your development to becoming a chiropractor? Yeah, it was a really interesting ride. You know, as a um, part of the inaugural class, uh, they were creating the curriculum as we were coming through. We didn't have accreditation when we started. I remember 
on my first day, uh, I turned up and Phil McMaster uh, was giving us a lecture and he said, you know, I really appreciate the way uh, you guys have put your faith in us that uh, we're going to get accreditation and the time that you're here at the college and you'll be able to practice. And I thought at the time, what? <laughs> There's no accreditation. So that, that was an interesting journey. Um, you know, there were shifting goalposts along the way. And I, I loved being a part of that class. The friends that I made there, the lifelong friends, my best friends are the classmates that, um, that I met back in 1994. And we, we still catch up. You know, even if you haven't seen someone for a couple of years, you have a catch up and it's just like old times. Um, you know, so that camaraderie being in the pioneering class was, was amazing. Uh, the frustrations were not really knowing what was ahead. Uh, goalposts were, were shifted often um, as we went through that accreditation journey. And probably one of the biggest challenges is as we got to the end of the program, you know, we had to be in our final year before they'd accredited us because they needed to see the whole program. That's changed a little bit these days with accreditation, but back then that's what we had to do. And uh, we had applied for a, a master's degree. We had a very heavy research component and we got right to the last hurdle and then we got turned down with that accreditation. Uh, they said, no, we don't want to give you a master's degree. You need to come back to us and uh, go in with a, a bachelor's degree. I didn't really care what we what degree we got, but it meant that we couldn't just graduate and practice. Um, and we got together at the time, remember Robin Taylor, uh, who was one of the founders of the college said, I know this feels really frustrating now, but uh, you know, you're gonna get through this and in five years time, you're gonna look back and laugh. At the time it didn't feel that way, but he was right. It took us about an extra nine months to be able to practice after we finished chiropractic college. And the, the real challenge um, a, a good thing and a bad thing was in lieu of accreditation, we had the opportunity to sit a basically an exit exam from another chiropractic college, uh, a college from Australia. And our education was very vitalistic in its nature. And the colleges in Australia were more uh, not so vitalistic, I suppose. So our class had to sit this exit exam from a college with a very different focus to ours and 70% of us had to pass that exam. And if we didn't, we wouldn't be able to practice. So it was a group effort. And we had three months of really intensive study, working with each other. You know, I can still remember kicking a rugby ball around at four o'clock in the morning and in the street that my friend Simon lived in as we were studying for this exam. And as it goes, um, I believe 71% of us passed that exam and we were able to practice. But yeah, that was a pretty stressful sort of time. But, uh, you know, an amazing journey to be a part of, seeing the college develop, and you know, amazing lifelong friends that, that I met there. Can you maybe just share some insights as to the things that you're most excited about uh, today, present moment at the college? I know that uh, you've got this new connection opportunity for students and maybe your entire community to come together and really just uh, inform each other or you're informing them on the new developments that are happening. Um, can you maybe just share some basic uh, overview and then we can get into some details? Yeah, really excited about where we're going. I, I think we've got a fantastic program as it is. Uh, the way our program works is you do prerequisites for a year um, or longer before coming to, to us and then you have a four year um, bachelor's degree with, with us. What we're wanting to do is bring that prerequisite year in-house so we can have five years with our students. Um, with the big focus being starting to get them to learn those psychomotor skills earlier. You know, you know what it's like, it takes a long time to develop those psychomotor skills. We did a, a research study where it was two years before you can even feel anything. That's what we found with our students. So really excited about creating this five-year program because we think that's going to be really beneficial for um, you know, our graduates, the, the confidence and the competence when they exit the program. So that's a biggie. Uh, as you know, I've been heavily involved in research and we've got some incredible things going on there that are just super exciting. So um, 
Can you kind of can you kind of give us some details as to just some of the different studies? Uh, maybe just rattle off a couple different studies that are happening right now that you're aware of. A couple that we're just wrapping up that we haven't published yet uh, are looking at uh, subluxation. Basically, when when we go and present at research conferences, we might say uh, we did a randomized controlled trial. We checked and adjusted these people, and they got stronger. And if we didn't check and adjust them they fatigued, they got weaker. And invariably someone says to us, well, you could hit them up the bum with a shovel that had nothing to do with adjusting subluxation, that was you know, context contextual effects, it was a random manipulation or whatever. So we set about doing a research study where we looked at the specificity of the adjustment and um, what we found with this, and again, it's, it's still to be published, but it's just about there, we did an activator adjustment in the upper cervical spine to a subluxated segment or we put the same thrust in with the activator to an adjacent segment and we looked at sensory motor integration in the brain following this adjustment or activator thrust and we found a big difference we found that when you actually adjusted that subluxation um, we found what we expected to find based on the previous studies that we've done with sensory motor integration when you put the thrust into the adjacent segment, you didn't get that. So, you know, that was really showing that uh, specificity matters when it comes to adjusting. Because a, a lot of courses, they basically teach manipulation. If it's sore, you, you do a manipulation somewhere. Um, we really focused on specificity because we think it matters. So there's that. And we've done a, a really brilliant study looking at uh, neurophysiology and biomechanics associated with subluxations. So this is using 3D motion capture, uh, EMG on the spine with something like 600 different electrodes and looking at a, a person before they're checked and after, and also looking at the subluxation patterns in their spine and whether we can detect, detect where they are using the, this EMG, using the biomechanical analysis. And the, the results are just starting to come together for that. And from what I've seen so far, they're phenomenal. So you know, to, to me, that's sort of groundbreaking stuff. Mm -hmm. While we're on the topic of research, yeah. can you maybe just uh, paint a picture or give some advice to a high school or college student who uh, thinks they want to go into research? Maybe they're a chemistry major in college or a physics major in college, and maybe helping them orient to the opportunities that exist um, to find their niche, maybe in chiropractic research um, and, and some resources or some recommendations that you have of um, how you would advise somebody who knows they want to go into research to uh, really leverage their time. You talk about that fifth year, um, maybe just from, from year one, uh, what they could start to work on or start to do to uh, prepare themselves or prime themselves. I think the key is making contact with researchers who are out there already. Uh, the sooner you can make that contact, the better. Um, you know, Heidi gave a, a talk to our year one class just the other day where she was saying to them, you know, some of you may, be want, may want to become a researcher and that can start now. So in our research centre, we encourage just the students, if they want to get involved with research, come and volunteer with us, get a taste for it to see if it's what they really want or not. And some do that and they think, mm, maybe it's not for me. And others really become passionate about it. And we've got um, you know, some of our researchers in our research center, uh, you know, one in particular, Jenna Dewar, she, she's phenomenal, but she was a chiropractic student here. At, while she was studying to be a chiropractor, she also did a master's degree um, and started working with us as a researcher on top of uh, having kids and um, raising a husband as well. So uh, yeah, I'd get in touch early. Whenever someone contacts me, I put them in touch with Imran Khan Yatsi, who uh, is a director in our Centre for Chiropractic Research. He has connections everywhere and he'll guide people along the way um, because it can be, it's a, quite a long journey to become a researcher. Um, but you, you make those connections early and you can be set off on the right foot as opposed to going in the wrong direction. All right, let's shift back to the college. There's some new developments. Uh, 
Can you maybe just speak to some of the new things that you're rolling out that uh, are taking place here in 2023 for the students at New Zealand Chiropractic College? Yeah, sure. We've got a lot that's happening. Um, yeah, we're, we're bringing that five-year program together. Uh, we're putting together an externship experience. So what we want to create is the opportunity for our students to go out into the community to see more, more patients instead of just being in our chiropractic centre. Uh, that's something that we're working on that we haven't been able to do previously, but I think that, that will be really exciting to get more of that community experience and to see a lot of patients before you graduate. Um, the other thing that we're doing is we're trying to create a more integrated curriculum. You know, previously with uh, the way that we teach, and this is common around the world, you know, you, you learn chemistry and you learn biology and you learn biomechanics and they're indiv individual subjects, but they often don't get tied together properly. So what we're working on is more of this integrated curriculum where it's going to be case-based, where we work with a, an avatar, I suppose, where you can follow the same person through a series of courses through the whole time that you're here at the college, and you can learn about all of the, the chemistry, the biology, all of that sort of stuff, looking at it from an integrated case-based perspective. And I think that will really help, um, help our students, help our graduates. Um, so... You know, lots of cool things happening within the curriculum. Um, and the, the other thing that I'm really passionate about, the things that we're working on, is technology development. So we've got an incredible team of researchers and we're building uh, devices, wearable devices, EMG technology. And what our plan is and what, what we're working on at the moment is being able to use these to track uh, the, the practice members coming into our chiropractic center to look at their autonomic function, to look at how they're adapting um, on an ongoing basis using these wearables and looking at what impact chiropractic care has on them. And um, we're putting these into AI models to help guide the care plans that, that we're providing. So our chiropractic center is pretty much the test bed that we're going to be using for that. Now, our students um, you know, we'll be able to utilize this before it gets out there into the field. And there's some incredible technology that we're working on uh, that we really do think can revolutionize how we practice. I remember going to the video game developers conference in San Francisco as a chiropractor, obviously not for any other reason except for that I love innovation and I love the idea of innovating the student experience in chiropractic education. and. When you look at how they make video games, they put all these different sensors on the body. In like an NBA game, they would have all the sensors on a person and they'd be moving just like the athlete moves or trying to mimic those patterns. And I felt like that's really applicable when students are learning the biomechanics of how they would move, the biodynamics of adjusting uh, the speed, the specificity, the precision, the gentle touch, the movements of your body, of the the the, I guess you would call it the, the dummy's body that you're practicing on, right? The, the sensor that is giving you feedback as to whether you're moving in a way that is biomechanically correct or is at least closer to the direction that the facets and articular, uh, yeah, the articular facets are positioned. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because I think that it is uh, a direction that the profession can head, which there's a lot of room there to explore and to really help uh, with student development. So I, I, do you have any feedback on that? Yeah, I'm 100% behind you there. What, what we've set up, we set this up last year, so we're developing it at the moment. We've set up our own motion capture lab that has nine different video cameras around a, a adjusting table. And what we're planning to do with that, we're using it in some uh, research studies, but we, we want to integrate that into our technique program. So we'll have our technique instructors going through and demonstrating like a, a model adjustment. This is what we're aiming for. And then the students will have the ability to do the same thing and see themselves on the screen comparing this model adjustment through to what, what the student's doing. And you know, with, with the modeling, you can look at it from every which direction you know, using the nine cameras integrating together. Then the other thing that we've been working on is force sensing gloves. 
So, um, you know, trying to work out as a student how much force do you put in, um, you know, a lot of students, they go too light because they're worried that they're going to hurt someone, but, you know, chiropractic is incredibly safe. So if we can get, use these force sensing gloves, we can show what an experienced chiropractor, how much force they put in, and then we can look at how much force the students are putting in and compare the two. So, yeah, the, the use of technology for uh, you know, technique development, adjusting skills, there's in incredible opportunities there, and we're trying to embrace every single one of them. I love it. I'm now one of the adjusting teachers over at Life West, just part-time mm -hmm. adjunct faculty, but I would love to see a uh, event that happens twice a year called Deliver the Goods, where students are given an opportunity to demonstrate their skills, get real-time feedback, and each time the event happens, they can measure their progress. It's sort of like a check-in with how are you progressing, and uh, that type of technology that you're mentioning, I think, is the key uh, to make it a really rich experience for students. So students that are out there, if you're hearing about this, this is cutting edge. New Zealand is always seems to be on the cutting edge, but can you keep unpacking some of the new developments within the program, within the college's uh, sort of offerings to students these days that you're really excited about? Yeah, we are rolling out um, a new curriculum at the moment. We introduced it last year. Um, we're into our second year of rolling that out. And it's really exciting stuff. It's looking at incorporating evidence-based practice uh, into everything that we do, but incorporating it properly. So, um, you know, I think evidence-based chiropractic, evidence-based practice are sort of buzzwords that, that have been used for a long time. And often they're used in a way which means you just follow a set of guidelines with what you do. And most of the time guidelines don't apply to the person in front of you. So the individual may not be like the people in the research study that you're trying to um, kind of look at to help guide the care that you're doing. So we're trying to infuse that science, that understanding of nervous system function, that evidence-based practice from the very beginning and have our students gain a greater understanding, understanding of that. So as they move through the program, they can practice in an evidence-informed way without being pushed into a, a little pigeonhole of what they can do. You know, you can see someone for twice a week for three, you know, three weeks or something, and that's it. Um, so it's, it's having that foundational understanding of the science that we can then take through the program. And we've also made some really good changes with our technique program. We're constantly developing our technique program. We're really, uh, really proud of our technique program. We think our students graduate uh, you know, the best in the world have been able to adjust and we've made some really good changes with our technique program to take that to the next level because we want to keep on increasing that ability of our students to be you know, the world's best chiropractors when, when they leave us. So you know, that's another biggie that we're really proud of and we're focusing on. Mm, amazing, amazing. Uh, can you share a little bit about how the technique department has evolved or is changing their approach to allow students to maybe have more hours practicing or um, gain more diverse uh, experiences of different populations of people they're taking care of? What exactly are you doing to really help students with their uh, technique or their clinical arts, shall we say? Yeah, we, we start our technique program from day one and it goes through the entire course, uh, you know, we never have a time where we're not heavily focused on technique and that's often, it can be 10 hours a week that our students are, are learning technique. And um, one of the things that we've done is we teach a lot of techniques, we want a, a lot of diversity within the techniques, I think there's seven different techniques that we, that we teach. And previously we taught them as individual packages, so you can learn Activator, you can learn Gonstead, you can learn Diversified. Um, what we found, though, is within these different technique packages, there's often conflicting uh, conflicting advice regarding, you know, this is what this finding means, this is what this finding means. And as a student, that can get pretty confusing. You know, one technique says this, one technique says this. So we're trying to create, or we are creating a more integrated approach with the technique packages, uh, which 
invites the students to take the bits and pieces out of the different technique packages and use them uh, the way they see uh, as, as the best fit for the patient in front of them. Um, so becoming a little bit less prescriptive and being able to adapt to that person in front of you um, and utilizing the best bits from these different techniques. And you know, for some students that may be, that may mean they, they do just want to practice Donstead. Um, but for others, they can pick and choose the bits and pieces they think are most appropriate for the practice member that they're seeing. So I think that that's a good initiative and it's helping our students to be more confident with what they're doing. Can you speak about some of the mission trips or the connections uh, to the uh, different geographic locations that you bring students to, to uh, experience the real world while they're at your school, while they're in the program? Uh, maybe historically and presently and, and in the future, uh, how do you see students being able to gain exposure through mission trips or service trips? Yeah, it, one of the worst things about COVID was the way that it affected our ability to do that because that's a really important part of our program that we're getting back into action now. So the key mission trip that we do is, uh, we call it chiropractic abroad, we go to Rarotonga. So Rarotonga is an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, there's about 10,000 people in Rarotonga and there's no chiropractor there. They've got limited healthcare opportunities. So our third year students have traditionally been able to go to Rarotonga. Um, just about the whole class goes. We'll, we take maybe 70 people over with us uh, over a two week period and they provide free care to the people of Rarotonga at a couple of sites around the island. And during that time, um, you see the, the confidence and the skills of, of our students goes through the roof. You know, some of them, it's early on in their intern experience and they might not have that confidence. And for most of them, you get to the end of the week in Rarotonga, having seen an incredible array of people uh, with all sorts of health conditions and issues going on um, and you see that skill the skills and the confidence just going through the roof and uh, you know they, they come back with smiles across their face and they're talking about it you know, for months and months afterwards so we're really looking forward to getting the Rarotonga experience going again and more locally uh, we've also had the opportunity to go to uh, different uh, marais which are uh, like a, a Maori meeting area uh, and provide care to uh, the local population who might not be able to afford to go and see a chiropractor in general. So we have what's called a, a Toha clinic, uh, you know, working on donations or free care. And that's a really great experience for our students as well. We, we're looking at, um, in front of me on my computer at the moment, I've got a, a post-it note saying outreach committee. And that's because we want to develop further outreach opportunities locally around New Zealand and then looking at other opportunities overseas as well. Awesome. I'm curious, do you do any outreach to the US as far as your admissions team doing outreach to go and uh, connect with students in the US? Do you have anything planned um, in the future just out of curiosity? Yeah, we, we do. Um, we have a number of students who come from the US. Uh, we've got a number, number of graduates over there who are directing students from the US to us. And we have a lot of students from Canada. Uh, each, each year we, uh, we get about 20 students a year who come to us from Canada. And uh, smaller numbers from the US, but it's growing. And we love having them here, the, the richness of the diversity that they bring, the enthusiasm they bring. Now for someone to make that trip halfway across the world to come to chiropractic college, are committed and they want to make the most of it. So we love having our US and Canadian students here. Uh, I was talking to a bunch of them at their orientation the other day, our new class, and uh, I wanted to gain an idea of, you know, why, why did you choose to come here? There's a college down the road from you in the US. Why did you choose to come here? And it was really interesting. Some of the answers I got, um, you know, they range from, I wanted an adventure. I wanted to get out of my hometown, uh, I love surfing, fishing, diving, skiing, tramping, hiking, and I've heard that New Zealand is an amazing place to come to for the adventure. So I saw there was a chiropractic college there and I was in. 
Uh, another one said to me, um, I decided to come to you because I went to my chiropractor and said, I want to go to a chiropractic college, which one should I go to? And they said to them, go to the New Zealand College of Chiropractic because it's the best college in the world. And I want to take that as a massive compliment. So they weren't even a graduate of ours. So I'm not sure what they were basing that on. It might be they've had one of our graduates work for them, but to, to get that endorsement from a chiropractor is amazing. Uh, a couple of others uh, were one person saw Heidi Horbuck speaking. Um, and was blown away with the message that she was giving, talking about our research, talking about the neuroplasticity model of subluxation. And another saw a, a video that Heidi put together. So patient education video, asked the chiropractor, you know, where did that come from? Found out it was from Heidi. Heidi works with us in New Zealand, so they decided to come to see us here. So we, we love having US students come here. We love having our Canadian students come here and uh, you know, they really do add to the flavor of our campus. We love it. While you're on the topic of uh, Heidi and, and your collaborative work, and obviously you have a team of researchers that you work with, um, can you maybe just break down a little bit of some of these newer models that you've been able to create with her um, in the last 20 years? Yeah, um, most of the work that we've done has been working on this idea of a, a neuroplasticity model of subluxation. So it's all about brain-body connection. Um, you know, your, your brain is driven by all of the sensory information that you're taking in from your internal environment and your external environment. And what we've found is that when you're subluxated, when your spine's not moving properly, that can distort the information that's going up to your brain telling it what's happening in your body and it starts making stuff up. Um, so you don't always have the right responses if you're using, basing it on the, the wrong information. So in, in essence, garbage in, garbage out. And the, the more work we've been doing, the more excited we've got about it as we've been seeing you know, when you adjust someone it can improve their muscle strength. We've worked with stroke patients and seen a change in their function over a number of weeks of getting under chiropractic care. We see the way the brain changes, the way the brain integrates information differently when we improve the information coming from the spine or improve spinal function and you know, getting that brain-body communication working better. So um, you know, the, the research we've been doing there we think is, is groundbreaking. We're learning from it constantly and you know, we've got a lot more on the go with, with developing this whole area of this neuroplasticity model. Awesome, amazing. And the whole profession is grateful for that work that you guys have, have been able to do. I know that uh, you've got a number of published papers. We'll try and link to those, uh, sensory motor integration, uh, the vertebral subluxation complex model that you're describing. I believe there's a paper on that as well. Um, is there something new that's coming in the next couple of months? I saw a post that you made about a, resur a resource, a student resource tool or network of information that you're bringing to the profession, the greater profession at large. Can you maybe just uh, share a little bit about what that, what that is? Yeah, with Heidi, we've been working for probably the last eight years uh, creating resources for the profession. So the research that we do, we can publish it in a research paper, you give it to the average person and it doesn't mean a lot. Sometimes the language uh, is different to what they expect because we've got to um, use the scientific language. Uh, the paper might be 10 pages long and it's hard to get that information out of it of, of what's really, what really matters. So for the last eight years, uh, Heidi's been leading the way and I've been helping her and we've got a team around us to build resources for the profession to help translate the science and the research into something that makes sense for the chiropractor and also makes sense for chiropractic practice members. And what we're doing with that is, uh, you know, particularly to New Zealand College students, to our graduates, to our alumni, we want to share that with them um, and share it with them at no cost. Uh, we want them to utilize this resource we think it's an incredible resource that, that we've pulled together. So you know, we want um, want to share that with our people so they can be better chiropractors. Um, it's going to help our students with the study. It's going to help our graduates communicate in chiropractic with their people. 
So there's some really cool things happening at the moment there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we have interviews uh, with the previous president and with the uh, admissions department at your school. Um, is there any other um, insights that you could provide about the campus or about uh, the resources that have emerged in the last two years or that will continue to emerge that uh, students can look forward to when they apply to come to your school or changes in the admissions process if you know of any or uh, just anything that you can continue to build context of uh, what these students will be uh, looking forward to at your school? Well, one of the cool things with our campus is up until last year, we were leasing the campus. It wasn't ours. Last year, we were um, able to buy the campus. So now we own the, the whole campus and it gives us more opportunity to, to develop it. We're here for the long term fix hours and we can invest in our campus to make sure that it continues to be a world-class facility for our students to utilize. So we're doing that at the moment. We're trying to develop it as best we can so our students love being here. Um, that, that's the goal. So uh, there's a bunch of things that we've got lined up that we want to roll out over the next two or three years. We just got to make sure we've got the funds in place to do it. But we want, it, we want our campus to be a great place to stay. It's, it's the simple thing, a great place to study, and we're very much focused on that. Uh, with the admissions, we're working very hard to get this five-year program across the line, um, and that will change some of the admissions criteria. Uh, we're probably jumping the gun a little bit by saying we're going to have that done by next year at the moment, but that's our firm focus, and that will make it uh, easier for people to come to us without having to do the prerequisites before they get here. So that's something I'm firmly focused on is making that happen. Um, and you know, that will be a very big shift for us. Awesome. And then just as we turn to the last segment of this interview, can we kind of just look to the future of the profession? You being in research, you obviously can see beyond where we currently are. Um, what can you maybe comment about uh, that we have going on for us, the momentum as a profession and uh, maybe just project out your ideal vision for the future of the profession or just um, some strategic planning that needs to happen for our profession to reach its full potential? Yeah, absolutely. This is something I'm really excited about, something we've been working on for a while, um, is utilizing AI. So utilizing wearable devices, utilizing AI to help guide uh, practice member care. So we're blessed to have Dr. Imran Khan Niazi as a part of our team. Uh, he's an expert in AI and he's got a crew positioned around the world who are working with us to create these AI models so we can have this uh, real world, real time picture of the health status of the people that we're working with, of, of the chiropractic patients. Like I, I had a meeting with Imran yesterday and he came in, he had three wearables on one arm, two on the other, and one on his shoulder. And some of these were um, things that he bought, and some of them were things that he was developing himself or developing as a part of our team. And our goal there is to create these models where we can track the health, the real, real health of the people coming to see us to get an indication of you know, what's working when they get adjusted? Is there something that we can change? Is what's the care, what's the ideal care plan for them? Um, and you know, if we put them on a care plan and we're not getting the changes that we're expecting based on this real world, real life information that we're collecting, what do we need to change? Um, you know, previously, I was just thinking this morning, I, I remember, when I was in practice, I used to see people regularly. Most people would come in every week or every two weeks, every four weeks, whatever it might be. And there was this one lady who would never schedule an appointment in the future because she said, I'll just come in when I know I have to come in. And religiously, she came in every two weeks. And the reason she came in is because her vision went blurry in one eye. That, that was her indicator to her that she needed to come in and get adjusted. Not all of us have those sorts of indicators. So what we'd love to do is create this technology 
where you can get that indication that yep, I need to go and see my chiropractor because I'm not adapting as well as I could do could be at the moment. Um, so we're developing these AI models to help uh, inform care on an ongoing basis in real time. Uh, and to me, that's evidence-based care. You know, the, it's the individual, the individual health outcomes informing the care that, um, that they're receiving from a chiropractor or for someone else for that matter. So I reckon that's where evidence-based care, evidence-based practice is going to go. It's going to be real-time, real-life data uh, as opposed to RCTs. RCTs still have their place, absolutely. But uh, you know, I think the transformation in healthcare is there. And I think it will be great as a profession if we can be at the forefront of that. And that's that's something that we're driving, uh, putting a lot of resource into at the moment because we think it will enhance the care of the the, the chiropractors are providing and enhance the health of the communities that we serve in. And then just as a side note, that's awesome. I, I don't mm. want to comment too much on that because I know that's emerging, but I appreciate your vision. Um, New Zealand Chiropractic College has, I don't want to say donated their curriculum, but shared their curriculum, which is a rather expensive thing to offer. It's very generous to not only the Australian Chiropractic College, but I believe maybe the Scotland one, maybe this new one that I'm hearing whispers of in Washington in the U.S. Uh, can you maybe just talk about the inspiration behind that and why New Zealand Chiropractic College has been looked to? Uh, to really shape the future of chiropractic education? Well, we're very much driven by our vision of a world of people expressing optimal potential. And there's a lot of ways that we can you know, aspire to that vision. One of them is right here, we're educating our students to become the world's best chiropractors so they can go out into their communities and serve their communities checking and adjusting people, improving brain-body communication, enhancing their health potential. We don't want to be the biggest college in the world, though. We have capped numbers. We're increasing those slightly because we're currently not meeting demand in New Zealand. We don't have enough chiropractors. Uh, we can't, can't meet demand in New Zealand, so we're increasing those numbers slightly, but we don't want to become huge. We love the family feel of our, our college. Um, so if we're capped with how big we're going to be what we can do to uh, aspire to that vision is share what we do with others so we kicked this off with the australian chiropractic college over in adelaide that was a bit of a test case um, and uh, shared our curriculum with them with the intention of they can, they can be teaching our curriculum which we think is a world-class curriculum and their graduates are going to go out into their communities and uh, be serving the people in their communities with what we think is real chiropractic care. Uh, you know, uh, some colleges go down the, the more of the musculoskeletal uh, focus. That's not really where we are. We're more of the philosophically based vitalistic approach to chiropractic. And we wanna see more colleges around the world using that approach, teaching a, a vitalistic program. So you know, we want to share our program with other colleges uh, who we think are going to take it and utilize it well to better serve their communities.